Carlo. Carlo Zaccali is Venue Director at Farber International and oversee, oversees Farber's non-aerospace portfolio, including ITT Hub, of course. He's a committed and active member within the events industry and active in several leading industry trade associations. A past president of the ILEA UK, which, before Paul acronym police Kirby gets me, is the International <laughs> Live Events Association. Uh, Carlo has a passion for the events industry, how he can use events to engage, be creative, offer brand insights and create unforgettable memories. He has also been, alongside Mark Griffin, a huge proponent of the EV Cafe, particularly with our involvement in the ITT Hub over the last two years. So very grateful for all your help with us, Carlo, and yeah. uh, over to you. Welcome to, the, uh, welcome to our merry band for the day. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. So what have you got to share with us? So yeah, I guess look, you know, we're um, you know, this time last week we were we were live and and an ITT hub. So you know, it's a it's a week now of digest and and take stock and 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 where we're basically aiming for the future. Um, you know, if I look at my whiteboards around my office, that's pretty much what it looks like now. And you know, 2023 planning is is full underway. Um, you know, but you know, the first thing I want to do is, I guess, reflect on, on where we were last, you know, this year um, and where we built from 2021. So we ran in July 2021 and we bought the show uh, um, from Mark Griffin and his team at the end of the 2021 event really saw its opportunity and how it also aligns with the, the Farnborough brand. So Farnborough International, owners of the, the famous Farnborough Air Show, um, you know, we've got our own problems with decarbonisation in the air. So we thought we'd try and solve it on the ground, first of all, and, and help the community do that. You know, we had a vast range of products on site, you know, and, and it was fantastic to see. And, you know, I think you know, it was it was great to hear, um, you know, earlier with Dean talking about the show and, you know, there was a huge buzz around it this year and it was great to see. You know, if we look at, you know, we had two days of really engaged content, whether it be in the Logistics UK theatres, the Energy Hub um, theatres, Talent Hub, and obviously not forgetting you guys in, in the EV Cafe. Um, you know, and, and for us, that's, you know, that vibe around that community is so important. And we're, and we're building this show on community. It's fast becoming that annual meeting place for the industry to showcase projects um, and also major industry announcements. If you look at, you know, Renault with their new e-mobility concept, um, the e-tech master optimodal, um, you know, I, I just wanted to have a go at the drone, I think, you know, and see how it could potentially park up at Southampton and fly over to the Isle of Wight with my, with my package from amazon you know or if it was you know right bus and and uh, the vol green australia announcement you know these are the things that we're now starting to see come through at itt hub and to see us as being the i guess the the catalyst the base of where people want to make those sort of announcements is really really strong and it's only where we want to take the future of our event and you know at the end of day one we had the drinks reception which you know i was probably worried in the morning thinking is anybody actually going to turn up i've got all this alcohol all this food and you know to then look across a sea of you know just shy of 300 people was phenomenal you know and, and I think you know with everything we've gone through you know we had masks on at the show last year and you know where we were and you know fighting for you know what, what who could actually exhibit you know what what manufacturers were allowed to exhibit because you know a lot of them were given clear directives that they couldn't come even though they'd signed up so that was a challenge and you know to have them back together this year you know great to see 16 OEM manufacturers here over 120 exhibitors you know, for me, that was, you know, really starting to see, you know, the difference and the challenges. But, you know, having Trudy Harrison walk around on day two, really getting to see the, you know, the ins and outs of what they're doing, making huge announcements of, you know, continuing that HGV fund of 200 million, you know, to really sort of make sure that research is happening and the buy-in from government. And, you know, she was really engaged as well, you know, and, and that was probably the best part for us to see is how interested she was in what we're doing and what this, what our industry are doing. Because in the days, you know, all we are doing is giving a, a base for the industry to talk about themselves, you know, but I just want to make it the best base possible. How many exhibitors did you have? So we had 120 exhibitors. Amazing. That's amazing. I think um, one thing, Carlo, for me was the, was the day before your event started. I was um, very um, privileged to be invited to a think tank with Renault Trucks the day before. And um, it were two things struck me when we were, when we were um, on the terrace at the end of this first, the, 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 the day before the show. One was the amusement factor of watching Paul Kirby run around like a blue ass fly while I was sipping a beer on the top of the building. <laughs> That was nice, uh, and but more importantly, was uh, was just the depth and broadness of all the vehicles that you could see from that from that you know high viewpoint across the whole forecourt there. 
you know, from all the, uh, the, the lorries, the coaches, the vans, just this huge depth. I'm just thinking, you know, five, 10 years ago, that did, just didn't exist. And here they are mm. all laid out, all on display for us all to see. I just think it's, it just goes to show the progression over the, even over the last few years has been, has been phenomenal. Jamie. Could you make a suggestion? Yep. Um, JC, would it be worth playing the video again from the introduction, um, especially yeah. for those that have just joined potentially, so they could see a glimpse of what the uh, ITC Hub is all about? Yeah. 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 Whilst There's also I an amazing that, one. Um, whilst I do that, I think one of the things which was really important for me was uh, not the technology, actually, it was the people. Mm. It was the fact that we had the community were all there and it didn't matter whether you rode an electric scooter right through to drove a massive truck as an electric vehicle we all had something in common and that was that we all support what the ITT hub does but actually we all support each other and this is a people business it's not a technology business people will find a way yeah, we. it definitely is. And it was really interesting, you know, in some of the deals that were being done at the show, you know, they weren't always necessarily with visitors, they were with other exhibitors, yeah. you know, and that collaboration in our industry, you know, whether it's, you know, Michelin, you know, talking about new launches with them or actually talking to a manufacturer about what, what they're going to be helping them with, you know, and, and that, that for me is, you know, one of the main elements of why this show exists, you know, it is to try and put that community together, but how we can put it together with all of the things they want to talk about, you know, and, but also making it really affordable. Cause I think that that's the one of the things, you know, amount of shows I've been at in over the years and, you know, launch shows and things like that. And, it, and it's, mm. it costs you so much to exhibit the time and effort. You know, you talked about Paul running around, you know, and, and it was between me and him trying to work out how we're going to start Bradshaws and move D8 DPD vehicles and, and, and things like that. But, you know, and I think, you know, that resonates through the whole of our team here at Farnborough, you know, and, and that's the benefit where we are now a much bigger team that, you know, can really start to put some, some a lot more energy into this show and be passionate about what we're trying to drive, um, you know, because there's a lot of work to do in, in decarbonising fleet, you know, and on yeah. that road stuff, you know, and it's, it's great to see what, you know, National Grid are challenging around their concepts, you know, what Zenobia are doing around, you know, their elements as well. But just to see all of that in one place with so many people and, you know, looking, I think I had a tear in my eye about 11 o'clock and, and, that, and that's, you know, looking down the gangway and just seeing it full of people talking. And, and that was just amazing to see. Yeah. Arlo, let's play the video. Let's show people what it was like. Welcome to the ITT Hub 2022. So I'm Carlo Zaccali, I'm show director here at ITT Hub. Paul was talking to a couple of guys from Renault. Two years ago, they were nowhere. Now, 26 ton truck in two years. The technology is here now. Why is it that the government target for reducing emissions from the heavy sector is to have those polluting vehicles out by 2035? The government needs to do more. And I know that's gonna be painful, but not half as painful as climate change if we get this wrong. So do tell me, Graham, what on earth are National Grid doing at the ITT Hub here in Farnborough? The energy system is the cleanest it's ever been, and it's getting cleaner. But it's getting cleaner mainly by variable renewables, so wind and solar. Because now the grid isn't perfectly clean. We will be clean as a completely clean grid by 2035. So people talk about net zero in 2050. My world is 2035, right? 